Hey y'all, welcome back to this week's episode of AMA Friday with Amy Miller recruiting in yoga pants. So let's talk about years of experience in a job description. All right, so I am not going to re-explain <laughs> OFCCP compliance. This does come down to compliance, okay? So the reason why we have to list something like at least three years of experience, at least seven years of experience in an industry, in a role, in a thing, doing an activity is because OFCCP says we have to make it measurable. No getting around that one, y'all. I know I get a lot of complaints about this. I would love to hear from someone who is OFCCP compliant how they've gotten around it. And maybe there's a way and I'm just not aware of it. I'm willing to concede that, but I have had it beaten into my head for the last 20 years. Yeah, feels like it. I mean, as long as I can remember when I've had to work for government contractors and even as an agency recruiter, if our clients were, you know, government contractors, there, there would be certain rules in place as far as the kind of candidates we could submit for full time. Anyway, this has been beaten into my head by lawyers, by HR, by recruiting managers. So if y'all wanna retrain me that there's a different way to do this, hey, drop a comment, shoot me a note, amy at recruitingyogapants.com, I'm listening. I would love to re get rid of this. OFCCP, OFCCP <laughs> say that five times fast, says it has to be measurable. Okay, so let's unpack this. When we're talking about a measurable requirement, we're talking about something that we can clearly see objectively on a resume, okay? I cannot see if you are a great communicator. There's no way for me to know that. I can see if you have worked with Excel for at least three years. I can see if you have been a software engineer for at least five years, those kinds of things. So it's measurable and it's easily identifiable on the resume. This is one of the reasons why I recommend a summary because I can just make it so easy for you. I am a recruiter with 10 plus years of experience doing a thing, just like you asked for in your job description, okay? I like that, I like making it simple. Okay, so measurable, that's the key there. Okay, so what does that conversation look like? on the inside. So when I'm talking to a hiring manager and we're gonna open this new role, we're gonna talk about the right number or the right way to word these basic qualifications to keep us out of the auditor's office, but also hopefully open up the, the requirements enough that we're not missing out on great people who may just be a few months short. We're gonna get into that as well in just a moment. So that conversation goes a little something like this. Hey, Miss Hiring Manager, super excited to work with you. Okay, so I understand you're looking for a senior person and they're gonna do all these big things and here's all the requirements and here's all the expectations of the role and here's all the things they're gonna deliver. Let's talk about the minimum qualifications we wanna see on a resume. And a lot of times I'll be like, well, I need somebody who's done this a long time. I need somebody who's done that, you know, has shipped like, X number of features or has done, you know, Y number of, of product ships or, um, you know, whatever, or, or has, you know, we, we start talking about the background and the experience that this person may have had. And so sometimes we'll land on like, okay, so you really want somebody who's been around the block a few times, you know, maybe shipped a bunch of stuff already. Like, is that like, you know, 10 years? Yeah, yeah, I really need to at least a decade in this industry. Like it's somebody that really knows their stuff, been around the block, got several t-shirts, okay. So just so you know, the person with nine years and nine months, you're not gonna see. Wait, what? Why don't I see them? Well. OFCCP compliance, basic qualifications. If they don't fit the basic qualifications, I cannot send them to you. Oh, well, no, I don't wanna miss out on somebody who might be really close. Okay, okay, so how about eight years of experience? Oh, I guess, yeah, I could probably, okay. Okay, so, so just so we're clear, somebody with seven years and six months, you're not gonna see. Damn it, Amy. Okay, what do you think it should be? <laughs> I 
that's what it is. Damn it, Amy, I hear a lot. <laughs> Said with love, of course. I have the best hiring managers. I just adore them. Uh, but no, we, we do. I mean, it doesn't really get like that. But we do have this conversation and we do talk about, you know, what is the absolute minimum? How do we reduce this to the absolute bottom line, bare minimum? And that's why you see a lot of job descriptions, one year plus, three years plus, maybe five to seven years plus, right? Like I, I want to make this, even though the person we end up hiring may have 15, 20 years of experience because we really need that depth of of seniority and experience and accomplishments and projects, possibly, we're reducing that years of experience to the absolute bare minimum so that we're not missing out on that superstar that just leapfrogged all their peers and grew exponentially over the first seven years of their career. I don't want to not be able to talk to that person. So we really do try to drill that down to the absolute bare minimum, but I also let my managers know, hey, if you're saying at least one year of experience, just know you're not going to get somebody who's been doing it six months. And they're like, I don't care because my idea ideal person has been at this a lot longer. <laughs> okay. Just, just being honest with you. And I don't want you to index too much on just years of experience because that is simply it. I'm going to say this wrong. I'm not going to articulate this very well. So bear with me, but I feel like a lot of times this is almost a box that we have to check because it translates to something else. Uh, and, and that something else is in the job description. That something else is in the requirements where it talks about, you know, shipping uh, this particular feature or shipping hardware or, uh, you know, delivering a million dollars in sales or, or what have you. So depending on the role, could be any number of things. But we're trying to take that one measurable aspect so that we are compliant and making it the bare minimum that would translate to whatever that bigger accomplishment is, okay? You're not necessarily going to be able to show me somebody with, you know, only a couple of years in the industry that has delivered the number of, of projects or programs and done the things and just had the experiences that somebody with more years of experience has had. It's just a reality. We all started somewhere. I get it. I haven't always had, you know, decades of recruiting experience. Okay. I had to grow too. And that's why we have different levels, different roles. So anyway, enough about that. Hopefully that gives you some clarity. So here's what I want to leave you with. Okay. So if you are that job seeker and you're looking at this job and you're, you're thinking to yourself, I know I could do this. I know I've successfully delivered all the things they would want me to deliver. They have this number, seven years of experience. I only have six years technically in the industry, but I've accomplished these things. I know I have, it. I know I can. What am I supposed to do? This is the one and only time I'll probably ever say this, okay? So write this down. On this day, Amy Miller said something she swore she'd never say. This is probably one of those cases where you might consider shooting your shot. Oh my God, did I just say that out loud? <laughs> As much as I harp on, you know, basic qualifications and the importance of meeting that criteria and, and, you know, what we can and cannot do from a compliance perspective, I have had those conversations with leaders where I have gone back and said, hey, look, we don't have very much pipeline here. We're not getting, you know, people who fit the criteria. We're not able to find people, you know, willing to, to take this role or whatever, or consider this role. But you know what? I've got a couple of applicants here that are a little shy on years of experience, but I think we should take a look. Let's talk through it. And so then we have a conversation internally about, you know, can we down level this role? Can we create a new headcount that maybe has a little bit looser requirements? So sometimes we have to 
kind of go through the, that process and we kind of shoot for what we really want and then we don't get it and then we have to, you know, it's, it's not, it's, from a job seeker perspective, I understand it's not ideal, but from a hiring perspective, remember the reason we opened this role in the first place. We're trying to solve a very specific problem. We've taken the time to really do our due diligence and think about what is the bare minimum that the person who can solve this problem is bringing to the table. And if we're not finding that, sometimes we have to look differently at the, at the position doesn't always happen. I'm not going to say it's common, but it happens often enough that if you feel that strongly, it may be one of those weird random times where I'm saying it's probably okay to shoot your shot. More likely what happens is I'm able to identify a smaller scoped role that you do fit the qualifications for. And I will pivot you to another team or to a different role or to, or whatever. So that can happen. Now, supply demand, big part of this, okay? If I already have a long list of people who have the requirements, years of experience, you name it, nailed it, preferred qualifications to, less likely that you're gonna be successful as the person coming in just under. It, it, it's just the way it works. We can debate whether it's right or wrong, but it is the way it works. So if I have a ton of people who have a lot of history, a lot of experience, a lot of qualifications, hiring manager is naturally going to gravitate to them. I would say, I mean, with September, 2022, if you're trying to get into recruiting right now, God love you because it's a bloodbath out there, okay? Recruiters are getting laid off left and right. So that's one of those cases where if you see a job posting for a recruiter with five plus years of experience, I guarantee there's a bunch of them out there probably applying. And if you're brand new or still you know, trying to get into your first recruiting gig, not the shot I would be shooting if it were me. Just saying. So, okay, so that's my thoughts on the years of experience. I hope this made sense. It felt a little rambly, but there's a lot to unpack here. And just, again, the, the bottom line is that we're forced to create some kind of measurable criteria. And this is just, this is the way I've been trained. This is the way OFCCP trainers have taught me. This is the way lawyers at companies I've worked with have taught me. This is the way recruiting managers have expected me to operate. And this is the way hiring managers and I have figured out how to solve for it. So measurable, 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 but also minimum. That my friends is the key. So I hope this helps. Let me know down below if you have any thoughts on this, questions on this. If you have found a workaround that is still OFCCP compliant, please share with the class. I would sure love to learn and we will see you next week.